Okay. I'm glad you guys all showed up today. We got something serious to talk about. There comes a time in every YouTuber's life where they look back and see there's nothing exciting. But now that's changed. We got a new backdrop. Yes, as you can see, I just decked the room out with anything I could find anywhere. And so now I'm gonna show that all to you right now. How's that sound, Curtis? Grogu what? Grogu Baby Yoda who? That's Curtis. Before adding anything fun to the room, I had to make sure the space I would be working at, animating at, drawing at, recording videos at, would be comfortable and conducive to good work. I reached out to a company called Uplift Desk to partner on this video, and they were generous enough to send me this desk and some accessories with it, including not only a lifting desk, but a mounted arm for my drawing tablet, a balancing board to use while I'm standing, and a very nice, secure filing cabinet that also doubles as additional seating. Look, it's like a friggin' surfboard, except you're standing. Before I planned anything else for my new workspace, this desk was something I needed to have, whether or not Uplift had sent it to me. I found oftentimes I was resting my wrist on the edge of the table and constantly hunching and craning my neck when I was drawing, and I knew that was gonna be a recipe for disaster, but now that problem is solved. And if you're someone like me that works at their desk for long periods of time, you might also find that this could be a helpful solution to your problem. If you're interested, you should definitely 100% check out the link in the description below where you can see all the different sizes and colors of desks come in. I got a pretty simple color because I'm a monochrome kind of guy. But yeah, let's get on to the rest of the room. Computer specs have never meant a great deal to me. However, I have been working with a Mac desktop for the past five or six years. I definitely would consider upgrading to a PC in the next few years. I've seen the benefits of being able to just swap out memory cards, video cards, whatever you need to be able to do in order to have the best performance for video editing, animation, whatever software needs to be run. A number of years ago, I also upgraded to using a Wacom Cintiq that served me well over the years. It does not have any mounting holes on the back like some of the other versions do, so I ended up having to buy an adaptive piece that was used to hold like laptops or something, and it works great. I love using it. Up next, we have the bookshelf. What studio or creative space is complete without a collection of art books, comics, and collectibles that have inspired me over the years and my work? I really can't help but pick them up whenever I find them on sale. So I've got ones including Rick and Morty, Star Wars, Spider-Man, Death Stranding, and my most recent one, Mitchells vs. the Machines. I always really like to see the earliest concept art for these projects, especially seeing how many variations led to the final product. Something about the scrappy nature of these drawings really hit home for me. And of course, we have the 100,000 subscriber plaque. Thank you, by the way. And down here, we have my countless visual guides and dictionaries I've collected over the years, including a binder full of drawings I did as a kid. Some of these are super old. Uh, we all had to start somewhere, you know? And yes, let us not forget the manga shelf. Don't mind Scott Pilgrim or Bionicle. Uh, I don't collect much manga these days, but I really got into it when I discovered Death Note and the anime. Um, and I even picked up some of these when I visited Japan a few years ago with my dad. Uh, it was a great trip, and I would be remiss if I didn't pick up some of these. Uh, they look so cool, I love the artwork inside them. I don't know many people who've heard of Bakuman, but this has to be my favorite manga. Uh, it's about a kid who wants to get his manga in the weekly editions of Shonen Jump, and he's got to compete with other artists and storytellers to get signed on. It, it's a lot of fun, it's kind of meta, and I definitely recommend it. I used to collect a ton of comics back in the day, and some of these are really worn out. Uh, in case you hadn't guessed, Spider-Man was my favorite, but because of the sheer amount of LEGO magazines I got in the mail, uh, my Bionicle comic collection might be a fair rival at this point. <laughs> When I was actually moving into this new space, I actually found this book my grandpa picked up at Goodwill a while back, and I totally forgot about it, but I thought I would show it to you here because it's just kind of cool. An entire collection of Marvel trading cards from like every year going back as far as like 1990, and they're all in really great condition. Uh, I don't know who gave this away, but they're safe and sound here. Up next on What's on Xander's Walls, because what fun is looking at a wall unless it's got artwork plastered all over it? 
So above the futon, I've got a poster from the ink tank showing all the aliens from the 5YL webcomic. Super cool and gotta support the homies. And over here, I've got two pieces of production artwork, one from Batman Beyond and the other from Ultimate Spider-Man. You're gonna wanna be sure you're subscribed because I've got a video about these coming up very soon, so you don't wanna miss it. Also wanted to be conscious of neighbors, so I picked up some soundproofing on Amazon and used spray adhesive to attach them to cardboard, which I then used command strips and then attach them to the wall. And it's renter friendly too, so that's a win-win. Aside from that, I've got a bunch of random posters from projects I've been a part of or gifts from friends. And get this, I didn't even remember I had the original comic for this when I bought it from the store. I only put two and two together when I started filming this video. I also picked up a TV over here which acts as a third monitor and a perfect way to binge Ben 10 or Batman Beyond or what other shows I wanna watch while I'm working on animation or other projects. Before I get onto questions, I just want to thank you guys really quick for making this room possible for me. It means so much that I actually have a space now where I can dedicate building this channel, putting together videos for you, and taking this way more seriously than I ever have in my whole life. So thank you so much. Also told you guys I want to answer some questions from Instagram, so make sure you're following me over there because I'm going to do this stuff all the time. And um, now let's get into it. How did you learn to animate? Slowly? Painfully? Would you try to push Ben one last time to become an actual TV series? No. It's a fan series. I, I do not own it. That'd be cool, though. Where did you get inspired to create Ben one last time? Well, I made a Ben trailer not long ago inspired by Logan, and that's basically where all the ideas started forming. I kind of decided, you know, if I'm going to make this happen someday, I might as well animate it and learn something I've been meaning to learn for my whole life. So... <laughs> Here it is. I'm literally learning the process as I'm making this fan project. It's it's a lot of fun. Was Ben One Last Time your first attempt at doing an animated series on YouTube or did you have other ideas? Ben One Last Time is the first animated project I've done here on YouTube. However, it is not the only animated project I've ever tried to work on. I've got lots of other projects that are in development behind the scenes when I'm not working on Ben One Last Time. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for getting me to 200,000 subscribers. I will see you guys next time.